everybody up on your feet tonight. We're getting ready to worship the Lord in here. But the name of Jesus still has all power. Y'all not moving. Maybe it's because I didn't know you were allowed to. But in here, for the next 30 minutes, you can do whatever you want. You can dance. You can clap. You can shout. You can spin around. High five. You can get free. You can get delivered. You can praise the name of Jesus all night long. Hey, cause we're here to lift up the name of Jesus. I need somebody to help me lift up the name of Jesus. I need somebody to help me lift up the name, lift up the name. We bless the name, hey. We bless his name, we bless his name, we bless his name. Hey, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Hey, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Hey, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Hey, the name of Jesus. Break it down. Singing a new song. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sing it again. Yeah. It still has our power. He can still heal you, save you, deliver you. Break every chain tonight. I like them horns and hit it. Yeah! Bring it down. The name of Jesus, the name. Shout it out. Let the trumpet sound. I'm going to give y'all exactly 15 seconds to represent for your role. I need you to give God the craziest praise that you can give him if you believe that tonight is the night that everything changes. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. His name still carries our power. His name. Woo.
I feel the Holy Ghost all over this place. I'm gonna run with her. I'm gonna run with her because I feel like something just shifted. I don't know if you can run, but you can jump. I don't know if you can. Maybe you just need to do one leg, but, or maybe you need to wave, but something just broke in your favor. We interrupt this regularly scheduled service to bring you a special announcement. The Holy Ghost. Jesus, what he's done for me, when I think about Jesus, how he set me free, I get all night. If you're spectating, you came to the wrong service. If you hating, came to the wrong service. I'm not leaving here till I get my freedom. I'm not leaving till I get what I came for. Tap two people, tell them road check, road check. You need at least one more worshiper on your road. If you can get one person on your road to agree with you, your whole situation can turn around. I said, if you can get one person to agree with you, your whole situation can change. Yes. Miracles happening right now, right now, right now. Healing. Oh. You are the source of my strength. And you strength of my life uh, dying my head to 
Somebody bless him right there. I've been sick for a couple weeks. I didn't have any strength. And I knew when I felt that attack today, I said, God, you're going to do something crazy tonight. I'm not worshiping from my strength. I'm worshiping from my faith. This is for faith worshipers. Everything is not all good, but you still got your praise. You don't have all the answers, but you, you still have your praise. It doesn't make sense. Your heart might be breaking, but you still have your praise. Father, in this atmosphere, do miracles. I said, in this atmosphere, do miracles. Turn it around. Right here, right now. Over the next few minutes, Lord, people are going to shout out in different sections when they hear something that speaks to them. Mark them, God. Whatever they shout out for, show up with it. Lord, some people need a car payment. Some people need direction on jobs, transition. Some people need a miracle. They're, they got a loved one sick in the hospital. Some folk are on the edge of divorce. We need you to turn it around, break the spirit that's trying to destroy homes and loved ones and family. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, show up and show out. In the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Give him 10 seconds of praise as you take your seat. Yeah. You know what? I feel something in here. I feel like... Hey! Hey! your worship echo upstairs to our brothers and sisters. Hey! Let the sound of your praise be heard by your enemies. Say, hey! hey! Lift up a sound to heaven. Open your mouth and say, hey! One more time, lift up your voice and say, you believe it, one more time, say, yeah. and the last time when you do it, put your hands together with it and say, yeah. we love you, Jesus, we love you, Jesus, we love you, Jesus, we love you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. I wish my grandmother was still alive. She prayed for me to walk into this moment. Y'all don't mind me tonight. I may cry, I may shout. I may turn this sermon over to one of these pastors down here and just lay out on this floor because I know where I should be if you look at my pedigree, if you look at the men in my family, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be right here in this moment. Oh, but God said, no, nah, devil, you can't have him. Is there anybody else that God just told the devil no? Is there anybody grateful? God just said, no, nah, you tried to sabotage your own destiny. And God said, no, you were in relationships that should have ended your life. God said, no. You smoked stuff, drank stuff that should have killed you. And God said, no. Am I talking to anybody that God told the devil, no, no.
He's been good to me, Brandon. He's been good to me, Bun. I, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. I might sing my whole sermon. I'm grateful, I'm grateful. I'm thankful, I'm thankful. Hallelujah. I don't deserve it, but you gave it, so I'll take it and I'll be faithful. Matthew 8, reading from the New King James Version. For anybody in pain, your, your pain is ending and your joy is about to be made complete. The pain is over. The pain is over. And it's going to be just like that. I said just like that. Last week we talked about the speed of, the speed of purpose. Who was here for the speed of purpose? You won't have enough time to pack for what God's about to do. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter 8, starting at the fifth verse. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed dreadfully tormented. And Jesus, as was his custom when people are broken, he said, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go and he goes, and to another come and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, <laughs> I'm playing that song, and I remember growing up in my Baptist church in Cincinnati. See, I remember where I came from. We didn't have cameras. We didn't have internet. We didn't have all of this stuff. We didn't have all these lights. We just had some mothers on that front row singing hymns and some deacons who would bow down on one knee and say, Heavenly Father, we call on you the best way we know how. Thank you that my bed wasn't my cooling board. I want to thank you for waking me up clothed and in my right mind. Stop by the sick and shut in, Jesus, and, and stop by. Touch the minds of those who, who are hurting. We didn't have big fancy Choirs. We just had some folk who loved Jesus. They did the best they could. So I'm grateful to be sitting in here with all these lights and all this nice stuff. But if you have all this and don't have Jesus, you have nothing. How about that? Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. The centurion asked Jesus to do a miracle. Jesus was willing to go to the place of where this sick servant was lying. But the centurion said, no, I recognize you. I'm a man under authority and I have people under me. I know who you are. They might not know, but I know. He said, I'm a man under authority. And he was saying, Jesus, you've got more authority than me. All you have to do is speak a word. I'm getting ready to say a couple things in the next 20 minutes, and depending on what I say, your whole situation is going to change if you have the faith to believe that I'm speaking to you. And I will know if you believe it by your response. It's between you and heaven. Once I speak it, what you do with it is on you. The title of my message is The Speed of Authority. For all month, just let them, it's the speed series, all month. Last week it was the speed of purpose. This week it is the speed of authority, the speed of authority. Pray for me as I bring this word. We are in a prophetic moment where God wants to unlock the potential of the church, not of buildings, but of the people. We are in a prophetic moment where the gifts that you have are now being called on by heaven to produce fruit in the earth. There are no more sideline believers. You gotta step up and step out and be seen and not be ashamed of what God placed in you. 
no more insecurity, hiding behind, hiding behind cloaks of innocence, and I didn't know, and God, if you want to use somebody else, you can't know he's using you, he's calling you, it's your turn, it's your time, and the time is... What you don't know is that every tear that you've cried, every no that you've heard, every ridicule, every whispering word, every DM and text message where they left you out and was giggling, God saw them all. And here's what God is going to do. He is going to unleash what's in you for the world to partake from you. I don't know who this is for. I see one woman who caught it. The world is about to know your name, Kells, Hallie. I said, the world is about to know your name because you've gone through enough that your name now carries an authority that it didn't carry this time last year. <laughs> I need the first five second praise break of the night. Your name carries an authority that it did not carry this time last year. Am I talking to anybody that's gone through it in the last 12 months, but you still here? You should have stopped praising a long time ago, and you still in here clapping, you still praising, you still worshiping. Do you understand this type of praise confuses the enemy after everything he tried and you still got your hands up? Something's about to break out in here in about seven, eight minutes. Help me say it like you gave it to me, Jesus. It's about to happen so fast. Because for some of you, it's been moving so slow. If I'm talking to you, just, just give me a wave or an amen when I say, if it's, hold on, hold on. If, if this is God, when? Next day, God, when? Somebody else gets something, God, why? I know they ain't praying. <laughs> ain't no fasting going on over there. <laughs> Serving you living holy. She over here talking about, hey, he put a ring on it. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> God's about to blow your mind. And he's going to do it so fast. You got to stay ready at this point. Listen to me. Stay, keep lo stay lotioned. Keep your perfume on. You don't know. <laughs> Just saying. Be pumping gas. And your promise going to pull up. <laughs> like, oh, no, my eyelash. My eyelash. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, Boaz. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> The speed of authority. In this scripture, we find Jesus ready to help. He's always ready to help. The centurion needed a right now shift. The centurion cloaked his urgency with humility. And he said, I got a sick servant. Jesus said, I'll come heal him. He said, no, you don't even have to leave where you're at if you just say what it's going to be. I don't know who this one is for, but the reason why the situations have not yet changed is because God wanted you to understand that it wasn't your worry that changed things. It, it won't be your anger that changes things. It won't be your posture in self-doubt that changes things. It will be his word. I'm looking for anybody that's been waiting on a word. Here's your word. It's coming. Not tomorrow, not next week, but before this sermon is over. Your word will either meet you here or it will already be in the place that you need it to be. As I'm trying to help them in here. 
I'm getting ready to attach my faith. Keith, stand up. Stand up, Keith. This is one of my young brothers in Christ. His mother is in the hospital right now. We're going we're gonna to pray. The doctors have given their prognosis and diagnosis. He texted me and said, I'm going to leave my mama's bedside because I need a word. Here's the word. By the time you get back to the hospital tonight, by the time you get back to the hospital tonight, her condition will have improved. Her oxygen level will have gone up. Their concerns about paralysis and brain injury and any such thing will have dissipated because the Spirit of God has just sent a word to the hospital. A wind just swept up the hall, just went into the room, blew past the curtains, and is touching her body right now. Is there anybody that has faith to believe that all it takes is a word? One word. And if you can put some worship on your word, you can seal it. Will somebody worship for his mama to be healed? Worship like it's your mama. Worship like it's your mom. Worship like it's your son, like it's your daughter, like it's your son, like it's your house, like it's your health. Worship like it's your name on it. Worship. Worship like your house needs a healing. Worship. Cancer, die right where you are. Heal. Mama's heal in Jesus' name. I'm not playing with no devils tonight. Your words are about to collide with the lie of the enemy. I need to say this again. There are three things you need to understand about the speed of authority. Write these down. Collision, convergence, conviction. Collision, convergence, conviction. Your words are on a collision course with the thing that the enemy wanted to hold on to. What am I saying? His mom right now is in the hospital. This is his mama. The enemy thinks that the sickness will remain. What the enemy wasn't counting on is that he would leave to get a word. Watch this. Does it negate medicine? No. Does it negate the expertise of medical professionals? No. But where their expertise ends, the word begins. I'm trying to help somebody in here. He left because there was nothing he could do. So he got to the house. <clears throat> Here's what happens. He was here. We agreed. He called on the name of Jesus to heal his mom. The word just left Lakewood and started heading towards the hospital. You don't hear me. The word is on a collision course with the hospital room. I need you to catch this. All of us have seen movies where there have been car crashes. Have you ever seen it where a bigger car crashes into a smaller car? They could be going at the same rate of speed, but the one that carries more weight I need somebody to help me. The one that carries more weight pushes the smaller vehicle out of the way because the more weight you have, the more authority you have. I don't have a church all the way in that back. I need y'all to hear what I'm saying. Oh, there you go. There y'all go. What up? The word is the truth. The sickness is the lie. Truth carries more weight than a lie. Truth is the substance. A lie is a shadow. Shadows can't stand. It's darkness. When the light shows up, the shadow has to leave. It's on a collision course. I don't know who this is for, but you need to speak something crazy right now. No, you clap. You need to speak something crazy like $10 million. See, y'all laughed, but I said it and I meant it. You know why? Because I need 10 million for the vision. I need 10 million so I can build the kingdom. Matter of fact, I need a billion. 
so that I can do whatever the Lord tells me to do and I don't have to ask permission from anybody. Brandon, I just need you to touch and agree with me on that. I need a billion dollar agreement. Ah, I need a billion dollar agreement. Ah, you need to find somebody that will agree with you on your road for something crazy. Just, just ask them. Ask them up in that balcony. Don't make me come up there. That's right. Bun. You spoke something crazy like telethon. How much showed up? 66 million. He spoke a word that turned into 66 million. So you were thinking I was playing games and your example is on the front row, sitting in red, symbolic of the blood. Because if you can speak it and the blood covers it, it has to show up. I, I need a break right there. I need a praise, but only for the crazy. If you're not crazy, Only if 2018 is your year. Only if 2018 is your year. Other than that, stay seated. Don't say nothing. Oh, 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 oh. The word is on a collision course with the thing the enemy wants to hold on to. Here's the thing about what, what's coming. Jesus has never asked the devil permission for anything. The word is about to violently take it by force. Ain't gonna be no excuse me, devil. Could you let go of my destiny? I was just wondering if you could let my promises go. I mean, maybe not tonight, but tomorrow. No, the word's coming through like what? What? Give me all of that. Give me that. I want all of this. Give me that. I want my freedom. I want my deliverance. Give me that. I want my spouse. Give me my kids. I want a new job. Give me that house. Matter of fact, give me the whole office building. I don't want a suite. I need somebody who believes. Open your... Somebody say collision. collision. The next word is convergence. Convergence means God, if you start moving at the speed of your authority, Kels, God will start sending the people to come alongside you to help you with the thing God spoke to you. But I got to use you again. You spoke one thing, you made one call. Then that call made all these other calls, right? So you had a collision course, you had a, you had a vision, you spoke it. And then God started bringing the resources and the relationships to bring about the promise. I'm declaring right now in this very second, that man of God right there in the, in the vest and everybody in your row and everybody within a 10 foot radius of you, I declare right now because you stood up first, resources and relationships come to help you execute the vision. Now, I'm going to give everybody in here and everybody online a seven-second grace period if you believe that word is for you. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Relationships, resources come to you in the name of Jesus right now, not tomorrow, not next week, right now. Now, 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 now. Now I feel the Holy Ghost. Stay right there with me, Will. I didn't even ask them. They got up there themselves. I like it. Somebody say collision. Somebody say convergence. The people that are near you are not by accident. It's not by accident. This ain't by accident. This your squad. 
turn around, look at your squad. I got a squad. Where my squad at? Where my hitters at? They're like, I'll be your squad. I like that. Is there anybody that says, I'll go to bat for you? I'm gonna tell you right now, I still got about 10 more minutes. Can I preach it like I feel it? I don't feel like me. I never wear suits on Wednesdays. I'll tell you why, because I want to act up. The night the Holy Ghost said, get dressed, because I'm, I'm changing your address. You got to change clothes for where I'm taking you. I don't know who this is for, but you got to get that spirit of heaviness off of you. It's time to change clothes. He's about to give you a garment of praise for the spirit of Tell somebody, change clothes. Change clothes. Open your mouth and get your garment of praise. Right now. Collision, convergence. It's all coming together, Reagan. It's all coming together. The people you need, the resources you need, the wisdom you need. The Holy Ghost is about to whisper to you in the middle of the night, and he's going to show you a glimpse of your future. And God says, that's all I'm going to show you. I want to see how bad you want it. Will you come and get it? Will you come? Will you? Am I talking to anybody in here? Collision. Convergence. Don't start out because I'll shout. Don't, don't do that. Don't do it. And the third is conviction. That centurion said, you ain't got to come to my house. I know what you got. I'm so convinced of who you are. You can just speak from right here. Watch this. The Bible says his servant was healed from that hour. The speed of authority is within the hour, the whole situation changed. You don't have enough room to shout for what I'm about to say. But if you made it out here tonight, I declare that within the hour, within the hour, I said within the hour, it's moving in your direction. It's shifting in the atmosphere. Within the hour, God has turned it and is turning it around in your favor. Does anybody believe it? There is a collision where the word of truth is going to collide with the lie of the devil. There is a convergence, God sending the right people, resources, relationships, a convergence so that you can do the thing God calls you to do. Then there's going to be a conviction. It's going to be something in your soul that when you walk in the house tonight, the people that didn't go to church, they believe, how was church? You're going to walk over and turn that TV off. I bind every devil in this house. Come on out of here, devil. Some of y'all going to walk home and leave the door open. Go on, devil. Get your stuff. Get out. Depression, get out. Guilt, get out. PTSD, get out. Arthritis, get out. Cancer, get out. Diabetes, get out. Spirit of divorce, get out. Get out and take all of your stuff with you. And while he's coming out, the Holy Ghost is moving in. And he's coming with blessings, coming with favor, coming with overflow, coming with joy. Does anybody else feel the break? It's breaking. Can I preach it like I feel it? The evidence of your authority is what moves when you speak. Watch this. The evidence of your authority is what moves when you speak. Watch this. MJ, I need a bottle of water. I need a bottle of water. I need it quick. I need a bottle of water. Somebody throw it to me. I need it in three seconds. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, PC. I got it. You got another one? I'll take that one too. I'll take this one too. Stay right there, MJ. Stay right there. What's funny is I said to MJ, I need a bottle of water. But because I have authority, 
water started showing up. I don't know who this is for, but somebody needs to say, I need a business loan. No, I don't need a loan. I don't want to pay it back. I need the money for my business. You know what? I need a scholarship to college. You know what? I don't think I want to pay my student loans back. Lord, could you cancel that debt? Am I talking to somebody in here? You know what? I want my house paid off by the end of the year. The power of life and death is in the tongue. And they that love it will eat its fruit. Tell somebody it's time to eat. You about to eat what you speak. You know, I said you about to eat what you speak. Give me that one, Craig. I'm too big to bend down. Thank you. I don't know who this is for, but if you can speak it, it'll be on your plate. Hot and ready, not microwave, because God knew when you needed it. You didn't have the faith for it before tonight. But if you got the guts to say it, God's got the power to back it up. The power of conviction is also the authority of eviction. When you have conviction of who you are in Christ Jesus, you can evict the enemy from any situation. Some of us need to go home, grab our spouse, and say, this contentious demon that's been coming up in here, I bind that thing right now. Spirit of peace, spirit of wholeness, spirit of joy, release in a spirit of Teddy Pendergrass. Close the door. Let me give you one, two, man. Somebody need to get their joy back tonight anyway. Where does authority come from? I'm going to give you this. Where does authority come from? Luke 2.52. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Your authority comes, the wisdom, the stature, and the favor. Your authority comes from being faithful, humble, and prayerful. Is there any faithful folk in here? Any faithful folk in here? Britt, you faithful? Hallie, you faithful? Where's my faithful folk? You're faithful when other people just, they're casual with it, but you've been faithful to it. Who am I talking? You're faithful. You could floss, but you don't. You stay humble. Where my people like, you know what? I could put y'all on blast. I ain't even gonna do it. I ain't, I'm, I ain't. God was watching the whole time. And then I'm talking to the prayer warriors, the ones that pray. Pray when it don't make no sense. Pray, cry, pray some more, cry some more. Still believe where my prayer warriors. The speed of authority is that the moment you speak it, God's getting ready to bring it to pass. Collision, convergence, conviction. The speed of authority. Jesus said, I ain't seen faith like this anywhere. What he was saying is, I've been waiting for somebody to say something crazy. God's waiting on you to say something that nobody else has the faith to say. Lord, I know you're sending me to Greenville. Me and my wife, my kids. <laughs> Speak it. Somebody said, I'm coming too. We're going to be eating greens, macaroni and cheese, you know, all that. We're we'll eating all that vegan stuff here. Amen to y'all, but we're going to be in the South. You're sending us, but I pray that you do something so crazy that the oil keeps flowing here. And every Wednesday that we come back, it's just going to increase. And you're going to break out in revival in Houston and Greenville at the same time. I got faith to believe that God can be in more than one place at one time. 
I also have the faith to declare that there are people in here who walked in sick and you should go to the doctor before next Wednesday so you can come down here with your miracle report that whatever you were sick with today is gone tonight. I don't know if anybody has faith to believe that, but I have faith to believe it. Here's what's crazy. This is going to blow your mind, and now we're done. The centurion said, just say the word. Jesus went into a sermon and said, I ain't seen great faith like this in all of Israel. This is crazy. Then he said, your servant is healed. He didn't say he's going to be healed. He is healed. I need somebody to, to, do a, to declare a right now miracle in your own life. I don't know what you need to say, but you need to say it right now. Over the next 20 seconds, say something crazy out of your mouth that you've been waiting on. Just say it right now. I'm waiting on you. Don't look at me. Don't worry about what I'm saying. You need to say something. There's one. Somebody else, you need to say it with some boldness too. My whole life has changed right now. I'm the CEO of my own company. My family is saved, filled with the Spirit. I got some power. But be careful, because this is the season where God is drawing a distinction between people who have authority and people who play with authority. Tell somebody, don't play with it. Acts chapter 19, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish high priest, seven, the number of completion. But they had no authority, complete lack of authority. They went to church, but they had no, no, no relationship. They're outer court folk. They were, they were lightweights. Tell somebody, get your weight up. Tell somebody, get your weight up. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit worked unusual miracles through Paul. I declare right now that unusual miracles break out in your life. So much so that his handkerchief was taken to the sick. His shadow would pass over people. They would be healed. Somebody wanted to play with that authority, thought that they could pimp God. They went in there with one person, one man that had demons. Then they're trying to cast out demons and the demon spoke up and said, hold on. Now, Paul, I know. And Jesus, I know. Now, who are you? Watch this. Seven men clothed ran out naked. Catch this in the spirit. One man beat up seven men. They ran out naked. Why? Because God wanted to expose them. Yeah. If you're not for real about this thing, yeah. tell somebody, don't play with it. Now, I'm not talking about your flesh issue that you submit to God. We all got stuff we're not proud of. But people that are playing games with the holy things of God, God's going to expose you. They said his name, but they didn't have any authority. But I declare tonight, right now, that the speed of authority comes to your house. That as soon as you open your mouth, you see a shift in your house. When you open your mouth, you see a shift on your job. When you open your mouth, you see a shift in your body. When you open your mouth, things change. Just say the word. Some of y'all need to repeat what the Lord has said about you. You need to declare it over you. Let me pray for you right now. We're going to keep the Speed Series going next week. Don't leave. We're going to leave here together. Every Wednesday this month, I'm going to be right here. We're getting the Speed Series. You need to bring somebody. Now, I'm not going to tell you, but I got some special guests coming to help me. I'm not going to tell you who it is. And it don't matter because Jesus is the special guest anyway. He's not a guest. This is his house. I want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare the speed of authority comes over your people. Married couples begin to take authority in their house. 
They don't wait to get permission from the devil. They have authority to change it right now. I declare right now that the power to change the situation is rooted in the word and we declare the word over our situation. There is a collision, a collision, a convergence and a conviction. It's all coming together. The truth is colliding with the lie and replacing and removing the lie because the word of truth carries more weight than the lie of the enemy. You're sending the right people, relationships and resources and I have the conviction to declare your word in every circumstance. Seal this word in Jesus' name. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Don't move. 20 seconds. If you're in here, you've never given your life to Jesus. You need to get your weight up right here, right now. Start the year off by giving your life to Jesus. You never gave your life to Jesus or you need to rededicate your life to Jesus. On the count of three, if you're already standing, remain standing. If you're sitting down, then stand up. On the count of three, I want you to remain standing if you're giving your life to Jesus or rededicating. One, two, three. Stay standing if I'm talking to you. Stay standing if I'm talking to you. Look at this. Look at this. Come on, y'all. Look at what God has done. Look at what God has done. Listen, while you're standing, I want you to pray this prayer with me. And those who are seated are going to pray it with you. Lord Jesus, it's me. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. I thank you for the blood that has authority over my sin. I declare that I submit to you. You are my Lord and my Savior. All things made new. In Jesus' name, amen. We believe if you prayed that simple prayer, you just got saved. Somebody celebrate the word of the Lord.